Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the feature race at Woodbine on Saturday. Race number eight, it's the $100,000 Woodstock Stakes for three-year-olds going six furlongs on the Tapita surface. You can bet the Woodbine card with a DRF Bets account. And there's a good deal to go along with it on sign up at bets.drf.com. Deposit 100 bet with 250. Let's meet the three-year-olds in the Woodstock, some of these prepping for the prestigious Queen's Plate, the first jewel in the Canadian Triple Crown later this spring. I want to begin with the four, Corduroy Road, who was a perfect two for two last year, sprinting over the Tapita surface, solid buyer speed figures in both Good. of those races. Really the only question mark is the layoff. I think this horse has some ability. Yeah, I do too. I liked both of his races um, as, as a two-year-old, especially, I guess, the first one um, if only because, you know, he had his, tip, his, his usual speed in that race, but he actually took pressure in there from uh, the boss factor, who's also back in this race. He was able to put that horse away and hold on. Um, he won very easily last time as a heavy favorite, but he just got absolutely loose in that race. It feels like he's not going to get loose in here off the layoff, so maybe that works against him, but... He's hard to knock on what he did as a two-year-old. Working bullets for his return for a barn that can get them ready off the bench. Keep an eye out for the four corduroy road. You talk about Woodbine Stakes races this time of year. You talk about Mark Cassie. Let's begin with one of his entrants, the number two All-American hero, making his synthetic debut. His sire hard spun does well with synthetic runners, winning 14% of the time. Comes out of a live turf race at the fairgrounds. Has produced a couple of next out winners. The fourth place source coming back to win a 1X with a 79 buyer speed figure. I, usually I look at these kind of horses and I say, well, I, maybe they're kind of exposed after seven starts, mm -hmm. but it's a whole new beginning trying synthetic for the first time. Yeah, I guess it is. Maybe the surface switch will, you know, move him up. Not that he necessarily has to move up all that much. I think he fits well in here. It's nice to know that he could turn back. And even though he didn't win any of those three turf sprints um, at the fairgrounds, he ran pretty well in all of them. New top buyer for his last start. I guess he makes sense in here, Dan. If he's around the 8-1, to one, I'm not going to argue with this horse. Cassie also has the 7. Yes, I am free, making his synthetic debut. Uncaptured, the sire ran well on the old poly track surface yeah. at Woodbine. He has very limited data with his progeny on synthetic surfaces. This horse ran well in his career debut, showing good early speed. I like the way he then used versatility in start number two, sitting and finishing. And yeah. last time out, he got the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf it's Sprint tough. Winner Bulletin. It was just way too tough for him. If he handles the synth, just isn't a good trip coming stalking on the outside as he tries six furlongs for the first yeah, time? Feels like he can get the right trip in this race. You know, the six furlongs, I, I mean, I guess that's a question. I'm not going to worry about this horse getting no. six. He ran well in his first two starts. I wasn't blown away with either of those performances, but he ran well. He got figures for them. He was never going to beat Bulletin last time. I wouldn't be too hard on him for that race. He Makes a lot of sense in here. Do I want him at five to two? Not really, but I think he makes a lot of sense in this race. Here's a formulator fact for Yes, I Am Free, the number seven. Over the past three years, with three-year-olds moving from turf to synthetic sprints in non-graded stakes races at Woodbine, 30% winners and a $4.63 return on investment. The number six, the boss factor, is also making a surface switch. Josie Carroll occasionally will winter her horses yeah. down in Florida, basically just to run them into shape. Sure. And I think that's what the goal was last time out. Caught a tough feel that Mucho is a talented three-year-old sprinter for Bill Mott. The horse just did not take to the dirt, but ran some nice races last year on synthetic. Yeah, I think if you just want to look at that last race and feel like, well, they got a race into him off the layoff, so he's not coming in here, um, you know, first start back and maybe needing something to get him going. He's already had that race, even though he did basically no running at Gulf Street. This is his surface. I liked this horse as a two-year-old. I thought he ran really well um, in, in those second and third career starts. They were sprinting. They can get a good trip in this race. I, this is a horse I'm definitely going to use in here. Here's the formulator fact for Josie Carroll and the boss factor. The past four years, three-year-olds moving dirt to synthetic, 31% winners, a $2.36 ROI. And this horse should get some pace to run into. I know the victory came in gate-to-wire yeah. fashion. He seems very comfortable sitting from just off of the speeds. Speaking of the speeds, let's look at the time form U.S. pace bridge. Projector. We expect the one super success to be close to the pace. Super success won his final start as a two-year-old, and it was in nice fashion, beating a couple of minor next out winners. It was his first race with blinkers, mm -hmm. and being down inside, Jesse Campbell's got to go. Yeah, he's just got to send this horse, and we'll see how much pressure he has to take on the lead. That would be the thing that I think you want to worry about with him, because when he broke his maiden, I mean, he got to the lead right from the gate in there and really never faced a challenge at any point in the race. I respect the 
80 buyer that he got as a two-year-old, but I wonder if he can run that with a different kind of a trip, and it feels like there's a different trip coming in here. Number nine, Keon might get the right trip, a mid-pack trip off of a race which projects to have a fast pace. Keon is a maiden, only raced once last year, but he was back down to nine to two in a race that featured Skywire, a Cassie yeah. runner that came back to win at Gulfstream, a 1X with a 77 buyer and has shown some promise. Keon was far from embarrassed in that race, has yeah. been working quickly for the return, and just might get the right setup. Maybe a win is out of reach, Maybe. but I could see this horse perhaps lighting up the board underneath in single race exotics. Yeah, I can see that too, because it's not like his, his debut was a complete disaster. I mean, he actually ran fine in that race. You know, it's hard to look at him in here when everybody, you know, has a bunch of wins and they've all run faster figures than him, but it feels like this horse might have some talent. The three, he's a thriller, has won twice already, but both of those wins have come for the $40,000 price tag. Now we see he is near the back of the pack in a race yeah. with a fast pace. This could set up very well for him. I just wonder from a class standpoint if he fits with these horses. Yeah, he's just, he's hard to make in this race. I think if you are looking for a closer in a fast-paced race, it's the five, Tis Breathtaking, who proved that she was a good horse last year when getting that situation. She ran really well in all three sprints. She won the grade three Mazarine with a big four-wide bid on the turn, stretching out three furlongs like off a two-month layoff. And then in the Princess Elizabeth, listen, it was maybe just a long season and it didn't work out at three to five. I'm guessing they're probably prepping Me for the too. Woodbine Oaks probably prepping for the uh, Queen's Plate, but a 10 to 1 on the morning line, if this filly does come back firing, yeah. she's got a puncher's chance from well back. Yeah, you wonder if she's really going to come out um, running right off the layoff, but she did win as a first-time starter, um, going a really short sprint distance, and you know that she can sprint. I liked her Mazarine maybe better than any race she ran last year, stretching out. But she can sprint, and she's run some good races. At 10 to 1, I would be using this horse. Wide open race. We landed on the same horse, however. Let's take a look at our top selection. We're going to go with the number 8, Powell, who disappointed a relatively short odds in his first three races, racing on dirt and turf. They tried synthetic last time out. They tried blinkers, and I think most importantly, they caught the right field. <laughs> Powell was able to get to the lead. He does have good early speed. Yeah. You see him in front in the time form US pace projector. And then he was just ridden out in the stretch and basically geared down the final 16th yeah. of a mile. I have severe questions of the quality of the field he faced, but visually, I liked it. The fig came back fine. Right. And maybe if these other speeds don't go with Powell, I don't think Yes, I Am Free is going to want to get into an enervating pace right. battle. So for me, he's going to dissuade the one super success. And if he does, maybe Powell's in front turning into the stretch. Yeah, we'll see if he can set up there, you know, right up with the pace on the outside maybe and get the right trip. I, I'm sort of with you in that, um, you know, he, he probably wasn't beating anything last time. But the figure does suggest that he really ran in there. And when you watch it visually, yeah. he really ran in there. I mean, he never had to get down to serious business to beat that field. He won very easily. I know it was only five furlongs. I guess that worries me a little bit. Wheeling back in six days, I don't love that, but I like that better than coming off of a layoff. He has a recent race. He can handle the synthetic. He's got speed from the outside. And if he's around that six to one, I think it's um, he offers some value in this race. Nice outside post gives the jock options. You can go, you can sit outside while in the clear while using the good natural speed. And he's catching some of the more fancied runners off of the layoff. 856 for Mike, 8172 for me and the $100,000 Woodstock Stakes, your feature race at Woodbine on Saturday. Bet all the racing action with DRF Bets. Deposit 100, bet with 250. DRF Bets, ready, set, bet. An approximate post time for the Woodstock 456 Eastern. Good luck.